Hey guys, welcome to section 4.10. In this section, we'll talk about how to factor trinomials using splitting the middle term. Let's get started. So this is a technique that's used whenever we have a, a trinomial, something with three terms, but there is no GCF. Or you found the GCF and then you're left with three terms that have nothing else in common. However, A, the leading coefficient is not one. So in those particular cases, we use this technique called split the middle. Um, it's a combination of the AC method and grouping. So it's more of a hybrid. Uh, it, it's almost as if you're doing both of them in tandem. And it, it makes a whole lot more sense when we go over a couple of examples. So you'll see both of those techniques in action. So let's say we have this problem where we have to factor 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. Now, in this particular problem, we see that we have a trinomial, and then 2, 7, and 4 don't have a GCF, so we can't really factor anything out. And a in this case, which is the coefficient of the x squared term, is not 1. So we start by using the AC method, but we don't finish using it. So when I say we start by it, we multiply a and c. So a is 2 in this problem, c is negative 4. And if we multiply the two of them, we get negative 8 as our answer. Now, this is, I guess, the part of the AC method that we borrow, where we find factors of a times c that add up to b. So factors of negative 8 we start with 1, 1 times negative 8, and then we switch the signs, negative 1 times 8. Then we try 2, 2 works as a factor, 2 times negative 4, negative 2 times 4. 3 does not work, and 4 is already on the list, so we know that we're done at this stage. We don't have to try any other numbers. Now, we use these factors or these pairs of numbers to see which one of these pairs, if any, adds up to negative 7. And then 1 minus 8, in fact, the very first one does work. Now, when we rewrite this problem as, well, we write down the original problem first, 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. When we rewrite this with the middle term split, we take the coefficients as numbers that we got from the AC method. That's the whole point of doing the AC method first. Had we chosen some other random numbers, because we can always rewrite negative 7x as say 3x minus 10x or 4x minus 11x. I don't know why that took so long. Uh, but we can do this a whole bunch of different ways, but only one way will work or one way will, one split will give us the correct answer. And that split comes from the AC method. So here again, we hopefully remember that after we split the middle term, we have four terms left over, and that should remind us of a grouping, since none of these are cubics, so the formula does not work, and four terms typically implies grouping. So we group the first two terms together and factor out an x as the GCF. We group the last two terms together and factor out a negative four as the GCF. And then we note that inside we're left with the same binomial, 2x plus one, 2x plus one. So at this stage, if you remember grouping, we take this one big term and we take this one big term and then we factor out what's common to both terms. So if we factor out a 2x plus 1 from this first term, when we divide out the 2x plus 1, we're left behind with an x, so the x goes here. From this big term, if we factor out the 2x plus 1 or cancel it out, we're left behind with a negative 4. So the negative 4 comes down. And we have our answer, x squared minus 7x minus 4, my mistake, this should have been a 2, my apologies, uh, please go back and add a 2 here, this should not be just an x squared, the original problem was 2x squared minus 7x minus 4, so that should be a 2 here, 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 factors to these two terms, 2x plus 1 and x minus 4. Now the reason why I wrote this here is all too often students think that they don't need to learn splitting the middle and they can do the entire problem with just the AC method. So the moment they see here that, well, one and negative eight add up to negative seven, a lot of times students mistakenly say, oh, my answer must just be x plus one and x minus eight. 
And there's one very, very quick way of seeing that this is the wrong answer. Because if you multiply x by x, if you were to FOIL this out or multiply this out term by term, you should go back to the original problem. And we don't, because x times x is not 2x squared. And then x times negative 8 and 1 times x does give us negative 7x in the middle. But then finally, 1 times negative 8 is negative 8, not negative 4. So you cannot jump directly to the answer whenever a is not 1. So whenever this leading coefficient is 1, you can use the AC method and go directly to the answer. When this leading coefficient is not 1, you have to split the middle term. There isn't a choice in the matter. Let's look at another example. So here we have uh, factor 5x cubed plus 25x squared minus 70x. Here again, I want you to remember the factoring tree that we were talking about at the beginning of the course or at the beginning of this chapter. The first question you should always ask yourself is, is, the G is there a GCF? And in this case, yes, all these numbers are divisible by five. And not only that, there's also an X that's in common to all three terms. So we can factor out a 5x, and when we do, we're left behind with an x squared plus 5x minus 14. Now here, we're, we're factored the GCF out. The next question we ask ourselves is, how many terms do we have? Well, we have three terms, not counting the GCF. Three terms means we should try to use the formulas first. And in this case, the formulas will not apply because the signs don't match. The last term is always positives in both formula and 14 is not a perfect square. So we ignore the formulas very quickly, or we set them aside because they're not applicable here. And then we get to the question whether a is one or not. Since a is one now, we can use the AC method. If we were to try to solve this problem without considering the GCF first, we would have needed to end, we would end up needing to use splitting the middle where you would multiply five by negative 70 and get negative 350. And then you would have to find factors of negative 350 and get 25 as a sum. That's possible, but think about the amount of time that you would need to spend in order to come with the correct factors. It would not be a good use of your time. So here, always think GCF first, and this is the prime example of why, because if once you take the GCF out, even though the formulas don't work, since a is one, since the leading coefficient here is one, the AC method works. And once we use the AC method, we can skip directly to the answer. So one times negative 14 is negative 14. To find factors of negative 14, we start with the simplest one, one. One and negative 14 are factors. Similarly, negative one and positive 14. Then we try two, two also works. Two times negative seven, similarly negative two. 3 does not work, 4 does not work, 5 does not work, 6 does not work, 7 does work, but is already in my list. So then that means this is it, my list is complete, there are no other factors that could possibly give me the answer. So if we add up all these terms, 1, negative 14 gives us negative 13, negative 1 and positive 14 gives us 13, 2 and negative 7 gives us 5. That's exactly the middle term we were looking for. And since a was one, we can go directly to the answer. We don't have to use grouping here. So we keep the GCF where it is. Uh, frequently students forget to write the GCF, which is a mistake. And then the two factors from the AC method were negative two and seven. So those get the individual terms. So this whole thing factors to five X times X minus two times X plus seven. That's it. Let's look at another example. Here is a case where we have a problem where we have 10 X squared minus 21 X minus 10 Y squared. So here, let's think about it. There is no GCF because the only factors of 10 are two and five besides one and 10 itself. And the only factors of 21 are three and seven besides one and 21. So there is no GCF. This term doesn't have a Y. This term doesn't have an X. So the next thing we ask ourselves is, since there is no GCF, how many terms do we have? Well, we have three terms. 
after three terms, we look to see if any of the formulas apply. Well, we cannot find the square root of 10, and this is negative, and we cannot find the square root of 10. So for multiple reasons, the formulas get thrown away. So the only thing left now is to see if a is one or if a is not one. If a, this first number is one, then we can use the AC method alone and go straight to the answer. Since this a is not one, we have to use splitting the middle as a technique. So here we multiply a and c and get 10 times negative 10 is negative 100. So we write down the factors of negative 100 that potentially add up to negative 21. That's the number we have in the middle, negative 21. So if we factor or we find factors of negative 100, 1 times negative 100, negative 1 times 100, 2 also works 50 times, so 2 times negative 50, negative 2 times 50. 3 does not go into 100, so we, don't, we ignore it or we don't include it. 4 does work, 4 and 25, neg 4 and negative 25, negative 4 and 25. 5 does work indeed, 5 times negative 20 is negative 100, negative 5 times 20 as well. And then 6 does not work, 7 doesn't work, 8 doesn't work, 9 doesn't work. Finally, 10 does work, 10 times negative 10. And 10 is already on the list, so I don't have to try it. Or the number repeats, however you want to see it. Now, of these pairs, we see that 4 minus 25 gives us negative 21. And that's what our B is. So that's the split we're going to use. We're going to use positive 4xy and negative 25xy. So from the 10x squared plus 4xy, we see that we have a GCF of 2x. They're both divisible by 2x. So we factor that out. And when we do, we're left behind with a 5x plus 2y on the inside. And then from the last two terms, we see that we have a 5y in common. However, if I were to factor a positive 5y out, I'd be left inside with a negative 5x minus 2y. And that's something that I cannot use uh, to continue in the problem. So if I were to factor out a negative 5y instead, I would be left over with a positive 5x plus 2y, which is what I need in order to group these things together. So from this first big term and from this second big term, I see that I have a binomial in common, 5x plus 2y, so I factor that out. And then from this first term, if I divide out the 5x plus 2y, I'm left behind with the 2x, that goes right there. And then from the second term, if I were to divide out the 5x plus 2y, I'm left behind with a negative 5y, and that comes right there. So finally, we get that 10x squared minus 21xy minus 10y squared simply equals 5x plus 2y, and then 2x minus 5y. That goes there. As one last example, we have 196p squared minus 196pq plus 49q squared. Uh, I'm going to assume, and you can look for these, but you won't be able to find uh, common factors. So uh, the greatest common factor is, let's say it doesn't have one, because uh, these numbers are quite cumbersome, even though there is one, but let's just say that it, there isn't. We also see that there's three terms. Now we cannot use the AC method because A is not one. And splitting the middle will require factoring the product of 196. Oh, this should not say 149. This should say 196 and 49. Regardless, that's a huge number. That's a massive number. So if we were to multiply 196 and 149 and then try to find factors that add up to negative 196, that would be a giant waste of our time. So Here's where a lot of students end up spending way too much time on a test. They start using inappropriate techniques to solve these problems. And then they don't use the formulas to their advantage. So if we were to look at this from the point of view of, oh, a formula works, can we find the square root of 196p squared? Absolutely, it turns out to be 14p. And can we find the square root of 49q squared? Sure, turns out to be 7q. The middle sign comes from the middle sign. So now all we have to do is verify that our middle term works out. So if we were to multiply 2ab, 2 times the first term times the second term, we do in fact get 196pq, so the middle term checks out. So 
196 p squared minus 196 pq plus 40, 49 q squared. I think the page got cut off, so these letters on notability didn't come through. But there's, there should be a p here, and the q, I think, got chopped off by the page. Uh, this factors to 14p minus 7q, the quantity squared. And that's it. So moral of the story is, as you progress and get better and better at factoring, don't just get married to one technique. You have to be very, very versatile and be well-versed with all the, the techniques that we've covered in this course. And that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.